Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ridgie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make some nice, high-quality local recordings with OBS. Specifically, OBS Studio, just because that's what I use, and it has just a few more features. So now that you're using OBS, the first thing you want to do is get comfortable with your interface. And it's pretty intuitive right here. Basically, you have your scenes, you can add a few of them, but unless you're live streaming, you really don't want to. That basically is what's going on on your display. So right here in scene number one, we have a display capture and a game capture. To add a capture, just right click, hover over add, and add what kind of capture you want right here. Game captures are gonna capture full screen games. Monitor captures are going to capture your entire monitor, which is what I'm running right now. And if you wanna customize this, if it's not capturing the game, you want it to just pop over here to properties and go to capture specific window you can go down and pick whatever you want one of your games especially whatever you're running should show up right there for full screen games you obviously want a game capture for something else you want a display capture or a window capture and if you are using a window capture you're going to have to go in here and select which window you want but you're really not here for that and i know what you guys are here for you want to learn how to set up recordings. Now, the one thing I'm going to say about these is this will not work for live streaming. You're going to have to get different settings for that, and that's going to be a little bit more tricky to customize. It's going to be based on your internet speed and how good your processor and video card is. But right here, we have our settings. Our output is currently active, so I can't change anything. But if we go to output right here, first you want to set this mode to advanced, and then pop over to recording. And as you can see, this is what I'm doing here. Of course, first you want to set your path where your videos are recorded to, but then you're going to go through all of these settings. Set rate control to VBR, that's variable bitrate, and basically it will change the bitrate or the quality of your video depending on what's on the screen, which can save space and stop a lot of lag. So set that bitrate underneath it to 1000, click to use custom buffer size, buffer size zero, which I think is what they said to do. I've been following most instructions, but the settings on OBS Studio are very different, and I've sort of customized my own, but these work very well for me. Below that is your CRF. This determines the quality, mine is set to 15, but I think it goes up to 20, maybe even a little bit over 20, but this is really a balance thing. At the highest quality setting, it's going to lag your computer, and it's going to lag your computer bad. And I think I already produce high enough quality video. Now underneath that, set your CPU usage to ultra fast. This will make you not lag, but if you're missing frames, if you're jumping around in the video, set it a little bit lower, and that will give a little bit more CPU to OBS. And I believe that's it, and that works very well for me. However, all setups are completely different. It's up to you what you want to do, and if you have a bad computer, if you have a computer with an integrated graphics card, you want to have lower quality settings. Your computer just isn't going to be able to run them. But if you are looking for nice lossless capture with an integrated graphics card, I will direct you to DX Story. The files are massive, but hey, it's pretty much lagless even on really, really bad computers. Now the next thing I do is customize my video output here. As you can see, I'm recording in 180p, but scaling it down to 720p just to reduce a little bit of a lag and, of course, reduce how big the files are and how much processing power it takes to render and edit them. I would love to do 1080p videos, but my connection is so bad I could never upload them in time as they're more than twice as big. The downscale filter is, I don't know how to pronounce that, but you can see it right here. It is the best filter, and I believe it's the one you should go with, even if you have a bad computer, because I've heard that filter right there doesn't really make any difference. And of course, I'm recording at 30 frames per second, but if you want to go to 60, if you're one of those crazy people recording on 144 frames per second, which I don't even know if YouTube supports, then go ahead and do that. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is this does compress your video. It compresses it very well, and your files are relatively small for recordings, but it's still compressed, which means you're going to lose a little bit of quality. 
However, there's absolutely no value to recording lossless, at least in my experience, since YouTube is going to compress your video anyway, so you're not going to get any quality loss by doing this, unless you're on very, very low settings. Now the last thing I want to talk about is sound. To get more sound devices like your mic, your desktop audio, just go into settings right here, to your audio, and you can set everything up from there. I know I'm not explaining things that clearly, but it's pretty self-intuitive. You want stereo sound, you can add your microphone here. If you want to add another microphone, you can add it there, and you can add desktop audio and stuff like that right here. Now to customize it, obviously we have the volume sliders here, but besides that, if you go into filters, you can add audio gain on your mic, basically, which is just going to make it a little bit louder, and, of course, a noise gate, which I find very useful. What this does is cut out white noise. So if I go quiet, the mic goes completely quiet, and I don't have any white noise in my recording. The last thing I'm going to talk about is adding a webcam. This is in your sources like anything else, so if you want to add a webcam, just go down to Video Capture Device, click... Okay, and there we are. There's my beautiful face. We can configure our video over here if we so desire, but let's just click OK right there. And if we want to adjust it, hey, we can. We can just drag all of these screens right there and customize them however we want. And that is gonna be it for today. I hope you liked this video. I know it wasn't that necessarily important, but I had a lot of people asking me for it, and I just wanted to get it out. Regular Minecraft will return very soon. I'm settling into school. Everything seems to be going good. I have a great tutorial plan for Monday, and of course, a Richie's World, like always, on Wednesday, as well as some other fun stuff, maybe a little bit modded, and maybe, hey, we might include a face cam in a couple of our videos, because I think that's fun. But until the next time, guys, this has been Richie, and I'm out. I'll see ya.